This is You've Already Been Hacked, recorded on 8 August 2020. This week, we have a lot of interesting news. Some stuff we've already covered has expanded a little bit further, and some stuff is just quite scary. Let's get into it. So Canon was hit with ransomware this week. The electronics company Canon was victim of a ransomware attack, and this came out according to a leaked internal memo. So not only were they hit with ransomware, they lost their internal communications in another venue. In the memo, it said that the attack affected their U.S. website, email, collaboration platforms, and internal systems. Image.Canon, their cloud image and video storage site, experienced an outage sometime in late July. The service came back online on the 4th of August, and some user photos and videos were lost. Taiwan semiconductor industry has been pillaged. According to a cybersecurity firm called SciCraft, they say they found evidence that hackers, who they believe have ties to China, have stolen intellectual property from seven Taiwanese semiconductor companies. Some of the data includes source code, development kits, and chip design. Just in time for election season, the voting machine manufacturer Electronic Systems and Software, or ESNS, has announced a new disclosure policy for vulnerabilities in an effort to improve product security. The new policy applies to all digital assets owned and operated by ESNS, including corporate IT networks and their public facing websites. Well, hopefully that'll help out this year before we get to November. Capital One has been fined $80 million by the U.S. Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, or OCC. The OCC announced that it is imposing the fine for the bank's failure to establish effective risk assessment processes prior to mitigating significant information technology operations to the public cloud environment and the bank's failure to correct deficiencies in a timely manner. This all happened in 2019. The data breach comprised information belonging to more than 100 million Capital One customers. OCC, for note, is an independent bureau of the Department of the Treasury. Just this past week, Intel has lost just a small skosh of data, just more than 20 gigabytes of internal documents. The documents included schematics, source code, and other IP that belongs to Intel. A spokesperson for the company said that the leaked documents included data that is shared with partners and customers under their non-disclosure agreements. Welcome to Insider Threats. In a follow-up for a hack we've already covered related to BlackBaud, they actually mitigated the attack. Congratulations. By mitigated, I mean they paid $84,000 to those that had the ransomware demands. They did this back in May of 2020. This came out this week. If you recall, BlackBot is related to software for colleges and universities and other nonprofit groups. The original hack was thought to be primarily located in the UK. However, as time has gone on, we have found that many other institutions were impacted. Back on July 23rd, Garmin was hit with the Wasted Locker ransomware. On the 25th of July, we found that they received the encryption key. While it's not known how much Garmin paid the Wasted Locker operators, reports indicate that the initial demand was $10 million. Continuing on, money is cheap. Corporate travel agency CWT, formerly known as Carlson Wignillet Travel confirmed that its network was shut down due to a ransomware attack in late July. CWT reportedly paid $4.5 million to regain access to its encrypted data. The strain of malware used appears to be the Ragnar Locker. What's interesting about this is that we are continuously seeing companies rather pay up than combat, fight, find. It's just the cost of doing business. Keeping the government running also seems to be a way to get money. The Athens uh, Independent School District of Texas 
will pay $50,000 to ransomware operators to regain access to the data in its servers that's been encrypted. The district's board of trustees voted to pay the ransom, which will be covered by insurance. That's kind of interesting. There you go for your cyber insurance, folks. The attack postponed the start of the school year by at least a week on top of everything else that's happening in 2020. And another $45,000 was paid out by a Colorado city. The city of Lafayette, Colorado paid that much to regain access to encrypted data following a ransomware attack that occurred on the 27th of July. The attack caused city emails, online payments, reservations, and phones to be temporarily unavailable. This goes to show that attackers, once again, only need to be right once, and defenders need to be right all the time, and there are simply not enough cybersecurity defenders to go around. In a story we previously covered related to the Grub2 bootloaner vulnerability known as Boothole, it looks like the fixes may not be the panacea we thought they would be. Linux distributions have released fixes for it. However, some users are reporting that the fixes are causing problems. What's being reported is that uh, rebooting and dual booting issues in Debian, Ubuntu, Red Hat, CentOS, and Fedora are all having issues. Multiple US government agencies has, have issued advisories suggesting various mitigations for the vulnerability. More information has come out about the hack heard around the world, that being the one that happened to Twitter on the 15th of July. This was the one that took over several high profile accounts and offered Bitcoin to everyone for uh, their trouble. One of the suspects was a 17 year old. There were three total. The 17 year old faces 30 felony charges and will be tried as an adult. At Black Hat this past week, a talk was given about how digital clones could cause problems for our identity systems. Now, what's a digital clone, you ask? A digital clone is something that combines a few different pieces of technology, that being using deep fakes, audio fakes, and chat bots. And the talk postulated and showed in a controlled environment that these technologies have improved to the point that creating digital real-time clones of people is merely a matter of integrating these three systems. Now, there was an uncanny valley aspect uh, according to those that were at the conference. However, you can easily see that we're only a little bit of time away from when this will be exceptionally problematic for systems that use either voice or visual or some other cues to ensure that the person on the other end, that non-repudiation, is really there. Just a few vulnerabilities have been found in Qualcomm chips on the order of 400 plus. So this now threatens millions of Android devices. The vulnerabilities are specifically tied to the digital signaling processor or DSP chip that powers high-end smartphones and devices from Google, Samsung, Xiaomi, LG, OnePlus, and several other manufacturers. The 400 plus vulnerabilities have been dubbed by the researchers as Achilles, as in the Achilles heel. To successfully exploit the phones using these vulnerabilities, an attacker would have to create some form of malicious code or application and then convince users to download it. As we know, that's not the most difficult thing. One thing that uh, these attacks could be used for could be turning the phone into a spying tool and exfilling data, including phone uh, f photos, videos, call recording, real-time microphone data, GPS, and location without user interaction. Other things that could be used to exploit these vulnerabilities would be to make the phone of the target consistently unresponsive and ensure that photos, videos, contact details, and other information on the phone were permanently unavailable. In other words, call it a denial of service attack locally to that individual device. In response to the attack, Qualcomm has issued a new compiler and new software development kit as well as several other workarounds. However, all of this would require software vendors and phone manufacturers to do all the work to recompile 
all of the uh, their software in order to mitigate. I don't believe this is going to happen, especially on the Android platform, at least not for the older stuff. It may be something that happens with all the new stuff moving forward, but as we've seen, support for Android software at large ends very, very quickly. Qualcomm has also stated they have not seen any evidence that this vulnerability has been exploited in the wild. Good luck out there, everyone. And finally... The FBI has issued warnings about Windows 7's end of life. On August 3rd, the FBI sent out a private industry notification that urged organizations to upgrade systems if they're still running Windows 7. I don't know anybody that's still running Windows 7, at least not in a virtual machine, although I am sure there are back-end systems that are tied uh, to Windows 7 based on some of the technology or how these systems run that it was required that they stay on that particular platform. So it's not uh, likely to be uncommon, although it's been long enough that if you're still running Windows 7, there's gotta be a real reason and you better, better find a solution to move yourself forward. Windows 7 had its support ended by Microsoft more than six months ago. Windows 7 was allowed to be upgraded to Windows 10 at no cost from Microsoft as well. So the only reason that you might not have updated could have been your hardware might not have supported it. It may be time to spend some of that capital and do those upgrades. That's all for the news this week. I'm your professor of cyber risk. We'll talk again soon.